Welcome to Voices of War, Horde versus Alliance. Hello, everybody. What? Look at you. Oh, my God. I have chills covering my... Look at all of you. Every year I do this thing like nobody's going to come. I don't know if anybody's going to come this year. I love that you're here. How are you all doing? Everything, everything good? I wish you could see what I see. I see so many great people and beautiful faces. I'm so happy to see you all. Tell me, who's from my original voice actor stage tribe? Who's, who's seen my crazy? Yay, some of you. Well, I'm so happy to still be here doing this, being on a, a panel again, doing with bringing some more amazing actors. So thank you all for being here. How's everybody? Everybody's good? Life's good? Everything's fine? <laughs> When I used to have the voice actor stage, I dreamed of having coffee with everybody. Anybody remember that? I wanted coffee talk, and we'd all hang out and have a coffee. I hope you all are good. I've missed you all. I'm very happy to be back here. It's always such a gift and a surprise every year when I get to do this and be here and bring my favorite actors and bring you. So thank you for being here. Uh, thank you. So, like, I can't even breathe. I'm so excited. I'm totally nerding out right now. It's ridiculous. So for those of you who don't know me, I realize I never introduced myself. My name is Andrea Toyas, Senior Casting and Voice Director at Blizzard. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, it's my job to work with the game teams and kind of work with them about all the actors they want and then go find people around the globe, literally, and then bring the, the characters to life on the stage. So it's a huge honor and a huge delight that I have. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking. This is my 10th BlizzCon, which is amazing in my sixth year hosting voice actor panels. And for me, I've been thinking a lot about you guys because I realized that doing these panels and meeting all of you, I've met so many friends, family, and amazing humans here. So even though I can't see all of you, I feel like you're my tribe and you're my friends and you're my family. So I really love you. I really, I hope you guys know that. Every year, <laughs> every year I do these panels and I think I want to do something great and make it extra fun because you guys have A, paid money to get here. You got a ticket, that's amazing, right? And then you've traveled far and wide, so I always try to give you the most epic experience I can give you. But before I start, I want to do one thing. It's my, like I said, sixth year of doing panels. Uh, the very first year I did a panel on voice actors was 2013. And I met an amazing young man who came to my panel. He's been at every panel ever since. This is the first year he's not here because he's had some serious health issues since I've known him. He got out of ICU about a week ago. He's doing great. So I want to dedicate this panel from a fan and now a friend that I love dearly. His name is Michael Strong. So let's all cheer for Michael Strong because he's doing great. We love you, Michael. I hope you're watching this. All right. All right. See, I don't want to, I just want to talk. Can we just talk and not do anything? Let's just hang out and chat. All right. I'm going to stop because we've got some great things in store for you. I'm not going to talk anymore. How about I bring out the actors that you're waiting to see? You want to see who I got for you? Great. Voices of War, Horde versus Alliance. Let's see who's behind door number one, shall we? Safe travels. Anduin, Anduin Rin, come oh. on out. Josh Keaton, everybody. Beautiful. <laughs> right down here, Josh. Yes. yes. Oh, my gosh. We got so much to talk about with Anduin, don't we? Jesus. All right. Actually, let me move my stuff over here. And let's see. If I have Josh... Who would be behind door number two? I will not fall. Of course. Not here, not now. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. Sorry, Josh. I love you so much. Oh, right? Lord. Uh, <laughs> Look at her amazing coat. Look at that coat. Such a gorgeous dark lady. She's amazing. All right. So door number three, any guesses? My magic will of tear your heart. <laughs> right, right. Just with these three people, we've got a lot to talk about, right? Oh my gosh. But wait, it doesn't stop there. Who could be next? Now, let Catherine me see Proudmore, if I can do people. This this time. And dear. Welcome home, daughter. Ka Catherine, right there. All the way from the UK. And next we have... My chamber walls Princess are Delange. adorned with many skulls, <laughs> but there is always room for one more. Right? Look what we do for you. Look what we do. We love you so much. All right. Fun doesn't stop there. Next we have... <sighs> Rokan, come on out. Like you're not happy to see <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at this. It's, I'm already so happy. It's crazy. Okay, and then I had this person. 
I was going to throw myself on the sword for if I couldn't get. Are you ready? Come to the court right? of spirits. <laughs> it's time we be finalizing our contract. Bananas, right? You know, it's so funny. When we were recording these characters, I'm like, I don't think you guys understand that your life's about to change. I think, are you guys getting a sense of this? A little bit, a little bit. Okay, but I got one more surprise for you. Anybody, guesses? A turtle made it to the water. <laughs> oh my God. A Marianne has made it to the BlizzCon, everybody. Come on now. <laughs> Marianne, how do you feel right now? Do you just feel... This is absolutely awesome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Well, no, so uh, well, none of us would be here if it wasn't for, without my fearless leader, the man who puts up with all my crazy, the one and only, our lead narrative designer, Steve Denuser. <laughs> Poor Steve has to come on after Marianne. That was really kind of a... <laughs> I feel bad after that chair. I know. Wow. Right? Look at this. What a lineup. Look this at is this. So fantastic, huh? Part of me just wants to sit here and stare at them. Like, let's just all sit and stare. Like, <laughs> you know, you think even though this is my job, I still totally fangirl out. Like, really? They're here and I just want to look at them. I mean, what do you think? We never see them all together like this. Oh, I know. I know. And we, we record so much of this stuff, you know, in little rooms, just right. with one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. And so to see this all come together like right. this, it just... It's so energizing. It's, it's amazing, right? Amazing. And then everybody in the middle flew in from London just for this, so this is really extra great. So, <laughs> it's so wonderful. So, for all of you guys who know my, the way I do this, what I tend to do is I like to go through and kind of talk to everybody a little bit about their character and their experience. Then I want to kind of open it up and just talk about the acting process in general. Uh, because a big thing, if the, those have heard me talk before, is that when people are acting, they're not really acting, they're bringing their own human stories to you. So I kind of want to talk about their connections to their character and dive in and all that. But first, shall we start with Anduin? What do you think? Oh my gosh. So I don't know how many of you know this, but Josh is the world's, and I say this with love, biggest wow nerd in the world. Like, he's your tribe. He talks to me and my eyes roll back in my head. I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. So talk about your love for WoW and how you've been playing for a long time. Yeah, I, I played since vanilla. Um, I, my first character <laughs> right. was an alliance hunter, and so I'm still kind of salty about what happened to Teldrassil. But um, I leveled, I, I actually quickly switched to Horde, um, and I guess I see wait, where all Wait, 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 wait. Did Anduin just say he switched to the Horde? In the beginning. In the beginning, and I was a Tauren Druid, and I, I love playing a Druid. I still play a Druid, I always play a Druid. Uh, my current Druid is Worgen, but uh, I, I just, I love, I love playing Druids. But I and, love uh, that you're Anduin and that you're also playing the game and know the, the races and oh, the yeah, Horde yeah. Alliance. No, I mean, I leveled up under the old PvP system. I'm sure all of you remember that. Um, made it to rank 12. <laughs> So Didn't gotta, quite pass general, though. you got to give us all your battle IDs so everybody can follow you and fight with you and play with you, right? You're going to tell everybody what <laughs> your name is, right? Everybody's just going to be, like, ganking me. I'll have to do the corpse run all day long. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what was it like? Because I think we've been playing... I think Anduin, you started playing Anduin in Cataclysm, I think. Do you yes. remember what that was, was like, like when a you... Teenager. That's right. What was it like when you got the call to play Anduin? It was hilarious because I remember when I had my first Horde character, I would always try to attack Anduin in the, <laughs> in the castle. And, uh, and then the guards and all the players would come out and I would die. And it was fun. But uh, <laughs> it, was, it, it was amazing. It was amazing because I had spent so much time in this game. And, and I loved the lore so much that, that when I actually, when it was time to audition, I had so much knowledge of what was happening. Like all the people that were referred to in all the scripts and everything. I, I knew who everybody, was, who, who everybody was who was being talked about. And... And then actually getting that call that I, that I booked it and that I was going to be the Prince of Stormwind was, was amazing. Prince of Stormwind. Who gets to say that the Prince of Stormwind? Absolutely. I love it. And now he's the king. So. I know. And then what I love talking about, all of us, obviously you know, I mean, Steve and I joke, we call him Manduin now. He's Manduin. Yes, that's right. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I think when we start out... Trinkets have dropped. <laughs> right. <laughs> Steve. <Woo! laughs> 
I love it. But we, I think when we started with Anduin, we never, we never could have realized the story. Things got really dark for Anduin. I mean, I can think Absolutely. of several sessions when you and I are both in tears. Yes. So, I mean, that, what's that been like? Because I think when we started, it was a young prince trying to figure things out. And now he's lost his father. He's trying yes. to fight this great war. Well, he's been forced, forced into it by circumstance. Yes. And uh, at times, he, he definitely was not ready and, and was looking to, to Gen and everybody else for, for help. Um, but still trying to to follow in his father's footsteps as that great leader. Right. Um, it's it's been it's been a, a huge growth experience for yeah. him to to have to really look into himself and see that that the way he always wanted peace might not necessarily be exactly how he has to run things. Right. There's a lot more to what he has to do than what he wants to do. I still remember the cinematic that we did uh, when you went with Gen to where your father was killed at. You guys yes. you saw that piece, right? Did you, who cried? Raise your hand if you cried. What, more of you, just fake it. Fake it like you cried. I cried. <laughs> well, we were crying. But it was really heavy because to, to lose your father and have to turn into the man that you were supposed to be, that was really dark. So when you have to do scenes like that, what part of Anduin did you personally connect with? Like, how do you feel in those moments or in the, or the mass heel moments? There's that, Oh, right? yeah. How, <laughs> what part of you do you connect with most with Anduin when, you, when you're in those moments with him? It's, it's hard because I, to this day, have not really experienced, like, my father's still alive, and, like, I haven't really experienced a lot of that kind of loss. So a lot of it has been me just going into my own head and kind of, like, role-playing that with, right. with important people in my life sure. and, and kind of going down those dark paths and, and seeing where it takes you um, to, to really kind of figure out how that, that loss would feel. Sure. Um, and, and, I mean, it does help knowing so much about his history and, and having played and having seen a lot of the previous cinematics. I mean, just as an actor, a lot, of the, a lot of the earlier lore stuff that you guys have done before I came in to do all this kind of stuff really has helped me out. Right. It, uh, it, it's such a rich story, and, and just being able to pull from the story and, and mix that with, with what I think would happen in my own life, would, uh, that's, that's really what I pull So from. what part of characters, what characteristics of Anduin do you think are you? Strong, persevering, scared sometimes? Like, I'm sure you've been scared. Absolutely. We all have. I think we all do. I think we all get scared a lot of the time right. and, and, and have to push out of our comfort zone to really, to really do what we have to do and right. step up. And, and that's not always easy. Uh, there's definitely a lot of that in, in, in me. I mean, as, as actors, we all face that, where, where we second guess our choices, we second guess everything. And, and there's always that insecurity, but you still have to push forward, right, and, right. and that's, that's Andon. And I think that's what I love about Andon. We've seen him go through some dark periods, but he always rises and he always gets up. And it's such a lesson to all of us for life in general. Life's going to be hard. There's going to be times we don't want to get up, but we do, and we keep going. So. Absolutely. He always seems to try to find a positive reason to move forward that's and, right. and, and to try to find the best in everything, and I really I respect it. him for that. We love you, Andon. Don't we love Andon? I just love that Andon is sitting next to Sylvanas. There's that yes. happening. Patty, what are you gonna do? I don't even know what to start with with Pat. Patty, there you go. See, so I'm so glad our little lion had decided to play for the whole. <laughs> that means secretly he loves me. <laughs> you heard it here. I also might have seen the error of my ways. <laughs> so Patty, your journey. Who would have thought? I mean, my God, crazy, crazy town. town. So what? Quick, what are the words that come to your brain when you think about playing Sylvanas? Like, what's it been like, the journey? The Thrilling. What do you want to say? You know, I always say it's an honor because this is a creative village that makes um, these characters, the games, the scripts, I mean, the writers, so many incredibly talented people, yourself, whom without, it doesn't sound anything like it's it, not you're true, hearing. Okay. It's the creative village that makes the thing happen. So the first thing that comes to mind for me is always it's such an honor to be part of this franchise and to be able to play a character for so long that is so complicated. Uh, you know, who, who enters into some really dark places. Yes. Um, so that's a challenge. Yes. But it's thrilling. Patty, how do you feel? Do I, I, I want to talk a little bit about your cinematic and what we went through that day. Oh my You've gosh. You've seen the Sylvana cinematic. Very dark, very dark times, but beautiful. I think, Steve, talk about the genesis of that Sylvanas story because it was, it, was a heart, it was a heartbreaking and it was, it was a tough piece to swallow. Well, yeah, because Sylvanas has that complicated history. Yes. 
that, you know, this great hero to go from someone who, who was willing to give her life for her homeland and to see that all turned and forced to do these terrible things, that scarred her. And she carries, you know, she carries that to this day. She carries the tears to see the tears come down and burn into her flesh. Uh, just an amazing character. So much fun to write for. We just love telling Sylvana stories. Yes. And I love it because I really, you, those of you who've been to my panels before, I always come back to, and we'll talk about this with each of you, how you are your characters. I think when my characters really pop, it's because you're bringing such real pieces of yourself to the role. And Patty, if you don't mind, we don't have to go into all the details. But I want to talk, Oops. I want to share a little punk rock story about Patty. You want to hear my little story? When we did the piece for Sylvanas, uh, what we do is we talk a lot. We don't have to go into all the nitty gritty, but we talk a lot about our connections to the character. And I really ask the actresses to talk about their connection to the character. And if you want to shortcut it, Patty, but your connections to what Sylvanas went through in that piece, how we've all been not our best selves at some points. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And we did a little improv. Yes. You know, she had us do this improv to yes. really get into the um, emotional place that that yes. required, which was really kind of deep and dark um, and filled with rage and angst. Um, and <laughs> I uh, got a little carried away. So here's the set. Oh, no, no, no. So, I was like, I'm going to apologize before we even start. Yeah, because, you know, the actresses, again, acting is, is, is them barring their own heartbreak and frustration. And all of us have tragedy in our life. Patty has had some challenging moments in her life that have made her, all of us, we have those yeah. moments that we're not our best selves. So I kind of did an improv exercise between her and Delaren, played by Erica, uh, where they were two people confronting each other um, over something happened. It's a long story for the improv. My point was, Patty had to walk into a room and see somebody that hurt her terribly. Got that so far? Hopefully. And Erica had just poured a fresh Coke for herself on this little table she was sitting at. And they were just improving as themselves. They weren't, even be they weren't being Delarin and Sylvanas. They were just being themselves in a horrible situation as an improv. And Erica just opened this Coke. Patty walks in. We're in this huge recording studio. And I think says one word. I'm blocking you. And then just nails that Coke across the recording studio. Coke's all over the equipment, the wall, right? Oops. The whole team's like, holy sh what? I'm like, nobody move. Let her go. And she's screaming. There's Coke dripping down the wall. Everybody's freaked like, out. I've wrecked the studio. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a huge black patch on the we wall. We stayed in it. We, st we did not move. Nobody moved because she was in the really primal element of getting to the core of Sylvanas and Sylvanas' heartbreak and rage. So what part of Sylvanas do you think is you? And I don't mean the dark skin, but I mean, like, what do you, when you think about Sylvanas, what does she mean to you? Listen, I love her, and I hope she sticks around for a long time, and I love to play all the complicated pieces of her, even those that are so difficult to absorb. Um, you know, having had uh, some loss, some significant loss in my own life, it's easy for me to tap into um, that pain and also that anger. Um, if, you know, for me, I've had a, a somewhat of a history of domestic violence as a child. And so that lights up a rage in you that never really dies. Um, there's a piece of you that's like Attila the Hun. And so if plugged in at a given time when something's really yeah, messed that up, has turned. that switch turns on. And you're constantly trying to kind of keep it, tamp it down. Um, so being able to find a place, a constructive place to put that, like kickboxing. Um, I love to kickbox. Uh, it really gives you a place to put that and to bring it into a creative character that's so, it's just delicious. I think we all have that switch, Thanks right? Thanks to you, guys. Thanks to the Hello. Thanks to all of us. You guys. Yeah, well, it really is a village. I think with all of you, you know, Steve and I can do all our prep work and do all that, but as we always say, when the actor walks in the booth and brings their own life story, that's when the magic happens. Oh, totally. And, the, you know, the, the thing with Patty is we have to make sure we don't have a bow and arrow around in the <laughs> studio because she lights that up. It would take a lot. <laughs> I know. Oh, let's give it up for Lady Sylvanas Windrunner. Just amazing. Thank you. Then there's Jaina. Oh, my gosh. Jaina. Uh, I know. I mean, I just... I mean, I just, to, to sit here and see all of you in one place together, such magic. I mean, I just, I just, we're all so lucky to be here right now at this moment, aren't we? Really, really. I'm, I'm so filled with gratitude. Laura. Hi. Hi. So what, I mean, Jane has been with us for so long. I mean, you and I were talking yesterday when we first met ages ago. Yeah. Did we think we'd be here now? Never. Never. I, I mean, I was just talking to somebody backstage about when I started Jaina, you know, she was like, Bright eyed, blonde hair, wearing a little crop top, you know, and just <laughs> she fights better. Just like fresh. That. Everything was peace, and now look at her. It's it's insane where we've gone. 
So what, how do you feel connected to her? Like, what's part of you? When you think about Jaina, what do you think about? How do you connect with her as Laura? Oh, gosh. I mean, she's become so powerful, right? So whenever I'm in the booth, it's all about body posture and just coming in with that mentality yep. that she has now. It's, um, it's funny because whenever we record, I feel like this game is, is so stylized, the way that we record it. You know, and, and it has such a specific sound to it that has been cultivated over the years. And it's unlike anything else. And that's why, that's why it is what it is now. I think it's been interesting for Battle for Azeroth because we really see Jaina have to go and confront her demons, you know, with Catherine and going back to Kul Tiras. So right. I think, you know, again, kind of bringing it back to real life, there's been times when we all have to kind of go back and deal with things, whether she was innocent or not, when we've got to deal with dark things. I mean, it's kind of a thing. We all have moments where we've got to go face some music. And it's and terrifying. It's terrifying. It's terrifying to confront your yeah. demons. It's yes. terrifying to come to somebody that you have wronged and apologize and, and just take whatever they're going to give you because you, you feel like you deserve it, right? Well, I think what's so beautiful is not only the acting in Battle for Azeroth, but the singing piece, right? Who liked the singing piece? Uh, but really, because it's, it's singing, but I think when you, I remember when, when Jaina, when Laura was singing it that day, you had tears by the end of it, but that, it just got, there's so much acting in that, so much sorrow, so much presence and heartbreak in that, so... What do you draw from it? One question I have for all of you, which I'll probably lean on, is when you have to approach a character and kind of be vulnerable and, and bring tears and find that heartbreak, I mean, how do you how do, you do that? Well, the song specifically, uh, I'm, I'm terrified to sing in front of people. I don't, I don't know if I let you know that when no, we No, you didn't, actually. It. I try to fake it when I'm asked to so that, you know... <laughs> so you're crying because you're so scared. No, but it worked so well for the song because Jaina is so vulnerable in it. You know, she's coming and... and saying this is what everybody says about her, and it, it's horrifying. And so when we were recording it, it was so shaky and overcoming that, and it worked so perfectly for what the piece was. And it came together so beautifully. I was blown away when I watched that. It, I was... I am so grateful to be a part of something like that, yeah. But I think you make a good point, and I'll, we can all speak to this, but as an actor, if you come in for a session and you've got to use whatever emotion you bring in with you, right? So if you're feeling vulnerable and scared, rather than go, okay, I've got to put that away, no, I'm going to act, but you, use you, you are human at the end yeah. of the day, so you've got to use it, so. Yeah. So when you, oh, can I ask, when, what, when you get in the booth, let's see your Janus dance. Can you show us how Janus stands in the booth? Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, let's see the Janus dance. I think we need to it. See doesn't it. look like anything, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> It's this. It's just a power it's like stance. confidence, right? <laughs> I love it. It's, I, that's a probably over. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do that. But it, that's what's fun. I always threaten every bliss kind. I'd love to pack all of you in buses. Steve, we're going to do that someday. Pack that's everybody good. in buses and go to the studio. Because when you see all of them deliver their magic... It's like, the, it's like time stops, don't you think, Steve? Like, it's, it's just another experience. There, there's countless times when we're in the booth with these actors where, like, no matter, like, I've seen these lines, you know, I've either written them or edited them or seen them, and, you know, there's, there's words that flow and cool words and stuff, but to, when the performance kicks in, there's just a magic that flows into it, and there's no price you could put on that. It's just to experience that is just one of the great treats that I have in this, in this business. Because they're bringing their own heart and soul into yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. So that brings us to our beautiful Indira. Oh, my gosh. Catherine, how rad is Catherine Proudmore? Oh, my so gosh. Rad. So rad. So rad. Yeah. So rad. Yeah. That voice, when we were auditioning, we got a bunch of auditions in, and we were listening, and then Indira, not because you're here, because I love you. That audition came in, Steve. We're like, and there's Catherine. Uh, yeah. There yes. was a confidence, a power, a warmth, and a heart. I mean, all of that was in it. And we just knew there and then it was delicious. Uh, when, when, when Catherine, deli when Jaina first comes to Catherine, right, in that cinematic, and Jaina's coming before her mother, and Catherine just has that wall, that cold wall, you could stop traffic. I yeah. mean, <laughs> it's amazing. That's right. So, Indira, how do you approach work like this? I mean, because I think, you know, you... The hard thing with video games, you don't get a whole lot of backstory and a full script. We kind of give you the main beats, and then off you go. So Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm so overwhelmed by today, <laughs> I have to admit. This is my first convention. First, first Come convention. Come on! Come on! It's insane. I'm just, I'm, I will get back to your question, but, but please, I've been talk. here. I've been wandering around since 10 o'clock this morning, and 
And I watched the, the welcome, uh, what's it called? The welcome thing. Opening ceremony. The opening ceremony. And I, I was in tears. And I, I'm not even a gamer. <laughs> and, and those words that came up when it says welcome home, I was like, oh my God, I, I hear you. I feel like... I feel like I've come home. Oh. I, I don't even speak the language, you know. But, I mean, I, I feel, obviously, these are the old pros, aren't they? So, um, I, I'm a newbie. We're new... Well, I don't know about... We're, we're newbies. So, we, we're just... You know, you, you enter into the booth, and obviously, we're in London, so we're doing it all down the line. And um, Andre obviously gives us amazing notes. And thank God I have Laura... Sometimes, not always, but you know, if you're lucky, you have the other per you have the other character giving you your feed lines, which means you've actually got somebody to work with, which is not it's not always the case with voiceover. And obviously, when you've got a really good actress on the other end of your scene, you you can do something interesting. You know, and then when there's good writing, you know, when you're playing contradictions, that's what I think I love about. Catherine is that she's so many things. She's suffered loss. She's disappointed, disillusioned, and she's proud. And also, but she's willing to sort of renege on those, that pride and, and sort of be the mother, you know, welcome her daughter back in. And, and what you were asking about, how do you go there? I mean, like all of us, I think, I think when we're born, when we grow up, we're all actors, you know, we all, how do we learn to, to be human beings? We role play. And I think that's essentially what we do as actors. But we just, we just stayed like children, really. We just keep role playing. Um, but I think, and also it's just imagination, isn't it? Uh, so, I mean, I'm a mother. I, I've suffered loss, like all of us probably, in some form or another. And, and then you just, you just go there, don't you? And a, a lot of the time, it's not... Like in the old days, when I was like a young student actor and all the rest of it, um, at drama school, you know, you do the whole method thing and, and you're like trying to uh, squeeze out that emotion. Uh, somebody hit me, hit me, so that I'm actually feeling something. But actually, if it's good writing, you just say it. And the emotion comes if you're really in that zone and not trying to fake it. And, and actually, there's a vulnerability within that. What you were talking about is the fear of failure and not, not being good enough and of not um, sort of doing justice to the work that's been given to you, the, the great work that's already there, not the fear of not doing justice to it. Sort of, you have to get rid of all that and just leave yourself alone and stuff happens, I think. Unexpected stuff. That's right. I studied theater directing for a while, and my mentor would always say, do all your preparation, do all your thinking, but when you're there, put it down and be in the moment. Yes. I think as actors, the key is to be present. And, to, and it's hard, because you get in your head, the insecurity kicks in, but if you can get rid of all that and just be Indira, you know, as I was talking to Indira about this, I tell beginning voice actors now, I'm not looking for voices. When I bring actors, and I'm looking for you to bring your whole life story, your wins, your losses, your tragedies, your heartbreaks, and when actors like Indira, like everybody here, can show up and kind of get emotionally naked and go, here's what I am, and here's what, here's, as a mother, here's how I connect, and here's the sorrow I've been through. But also, you know what? I think there's something amazing about you doing voice work which is like, because I, I act on TV and theater and all that sort of thing, but um, I think there's a freedom that you get using your voice because it's not about the way you look. You Amen, know? sister. We are Amen. bored of that, quite right, frankly. Right. So, you know, and, and you're not being judged. You're not, you're not judged by your ethnicity, your style, your weight, any of that crap. Um, you are, you know, you're just using your voice and your emotion comes through your voice. That's, we, you know, we, we sing to our children when they're born. You know, that is pure emotion and love that we give to other people. You know, I'm talking, I'm, I'm really it's making great, up it's now. It's great, <laughs> it's great. It's <laughs> great. But I, but... You really highlight what goes into this. And I think voice acting, and what people don't realize, and I talk about this a lot, and there's also no scene partner, no hair, no wardrobe, no makeup, no prop. It's just you emotionally naked in a room trying to bring it. But with that, as you're saying, you get ultimate creativity and ultimate freedom. And you can just be, and not worry about the right age, the right skin, the, da, 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 the right skinniness. You just get to be. It's great. Yeah. So for Catherine, you know, what I like when I do these panels is to really bring it back to real life and how 
like you're talking about all she's been through. She's lost her husband. She's probably got some PTSD. One of her sons is missing. Everything is crazy. But the idea of, of being mad at your daughter, but also forgiveness. Forgiveness is a tough word, man. So finding the courage for that. So and I guess as a mother in forgiveness, I guess what parts of Catherine do you think that you connect with most? Or any of them? Or I, I aspire to be like uh, Catherine, right. I suppose. You know, right. Um, yeah, I aspire to be able to forgive when you've been through what right. she's been right. through. You know, I can't... Yeah, I, as, a, as just a, a, a woman... I, I mean, I, I relate to her being a mother and that unconditional love. And if your child has wronged you in some way or, you know, there's been disappointments, I, I would like to think I could forgive. I think you're, you're never going to stop being a mother, I think. That's right, and that's always there. And that pain, I think, we're talking about switches that can go on. The, I don't have any children, but the idea of being a mother with that pain point that can just take you down. And what I really like about Battle for Azeroth, I feel like our storytelling is just amazing. I love having a mother-daughter relationship, right? Because we've had lots of father and sons, and I realized when thinking about this, you know, we've got the, uh, the Varian and Anduin thing that you're dealing with. We've got the Catherine and Jaina thing. So to have real-life family stories that all of us go through, Obviously not to this degree where we've got swords out and we're killing people, but, but you know what I mean? But to have a mother-daughter relationship. Steve, how did the mother-daughter genesis come about? I mean, I love that we have that storyline in our game. Well, I think just the, the setting, once we knew what our expansion was going to be, that we wanted to go to Kul Tiras, that we wanted to hear this story, and it was a great opportunity right. to bring Jaina back front and center. And then we knew there would be this, you know, all the stuff that she'd been through, what does her family think of that? What do her people think of that? And so to, to have her mother there to represent all those, all those feelings of a whole nation and how what, what the decisions that were made by Jaina, how those ripple out and to crystallize them into that mother figure like that was just a very powerful opportunity. Our designers did a fantastic job bringing that to life. Our cinematics group, everybody just really nailed that. It's such a believable and true performance that it, it is something special for the game. I think it's the nail on the head. I think in Catherine, we see the entire response of a nation, don't we? The nation has to forgive, you know? So basically, Catherine's leading the, the experience of what Jaina does when she comes back. So I think it's beautiful to have a mother and daughter and see the tenderness and vulnerability and anger and forgiveness, so. And also, empowerment. Empowerment. She says, go, you're the one. Yes. You can do it. It's yes. not gonna be me. It's not gonna be me. Yes. You're the future, yes. you know? I mean, I mean, look, video games, the more strong women we have in video games, the better. Am I right? I mean, for real. It's just great. It's just great. Speaking, what a great segue for Princess Talanji. Oh, my gosh. What? What? I mean, just when I put my wish list together, people, when Steve and I worked on who should come, I'm like, I want everybody to be here. Uh, but we knew Princess Talanji had to be sitting. Look, at she, you're in the center even. Like, holding court, girl. <laughs> So, <laughs> welcome to our crazy, again, it's crazy. Oh my gosh, I feel like I have just had so much coffee and <laughs> Diet Coke, and like, I'm so high right now. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that, was, that was a few seconds in before I did that. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Princess Talanji. <laughs> Again, I think with all of you, we've had this conversation, like when this hits, especially releasing a new powerful female lead in our game, it's going to get crazy. So now that you've done your whole journey, yeah. so you walk into the con, what's it like you come through these doors like, this is legit and real? I, can't, I cannot believe it. It just, I mean, I wish I was here this morning to see the welcome home thing, because it really does feel like a lot of people are, co are coming home, right. and um, you just want to be a part of it, which is exactly how I felt when I was asked to audition and... Yes. You know, well, actually, I guess my, my connection to Blizzard is Cara Theobald, yep. who plays uh, Tracer, Tracer in Overwatch. So uh, me and Cara did a show called Crazy Head um, together on Netflix. Yes, and, I Crazy Head. It's a great and, show with the Tracer <laughs> and Princess Talanji. And that is sort of, I saw that she just, like, the game had just come out, and um, I saw, like, what happened with her and her experience and coming to BlizzCon for the first time. So I was like, God, it really feels like, I was like, oh, somebody... Let me out. I want, I want to come in. I want to. So then when this came, I was like, I've got to get this. And, um, and it's just been an incredible, incredible experience. I'm really blown away. I know I've been told that there is somebody dressed as Princess Talanji here. Yes. We're going if to we meet. If we find her, we must. Hello. What? There you are. Oh We're going to meet. Walk, 
let's walk over. Oh my gosh. Look what? at you. What? Look at this. Are you kidding me? Ish, kind of. You just walk on by. Do your thing, girl. Walk on by. Because you look. You gotta come say hi to. Oh my oh, God. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh my God. Wait, okay, wait. I'm stop so for it. Sorry. Come back. Here. I am geeking out. Go? Here, we hi. Go say I'm hi. jumping down. Jump down, girl. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. You. This is easy. Oh my God. Take it. Over. Oh. <laughs> I know it's amazing. I cannot believe this is why this is what I wanted, and now it's happened. So good night. Please go back. You look amazing. Oh my Thank gosh! Thank you. Wow. The skulls and everything. You look amazing. Thank you for that. <laughs> See, I told oh, you, yeah, girl. I told you it's gonna get crazy. My job hit. My so, job hit them. So tell me, what's it like? What's it been like playing Princess Talanji? What's what, how, what? How do you connect to her? How did you approach her? I want to know how, what she means to you. Um, gosh, wow. The connection that I feel with her is she really is. It's a coming of age story of this princess. And um, the main thing, the reason why I wanted to be a part of this world is because having massive story arcs like that is very difficult um, in television and, and film um, for a woman, for a black woman, for a woman who isn't a model, um, proudly not a model. Um, <laughs> don't want to be a model. Woo! Um, so to sort of, I remember sort of, you know, I, I got the job and you know, I did my first session, which I think was in LA. I think it was my very, very first one in February, I think. And, um, and then just seeing where she goes, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my God, I get to do this and I get to have this experience and this happens at me and I've got to make this really difficult decision and I've got to try, you know, and you know, save my people. It just all felt so vast and the possibilities of where she can go and normally, when I get a script, it's kind of like, oh, and then she dies in the second scene, and, uh, and uh, that's it. Or, or she's, like, funny for a bit, and then she dies in the third scene. Just keeps happening. Um, I should change my agent. Um, so, no, my agent are great, please, oh, my God. Um, so, so it, it was just the, it, what, the amount of work that we do. We work for months months and I think I've never played I've never played a character for that long and I'm brand new to this and sort of being a part of something so historic so well thought out the scripts are better than anything that you get on television to be honest and to be a part of something where it feels like you're here to to stay um Steve will make that happen right Steve she's well, never going away well, say it now yeah. Steve well we've got to mm. talk later <laughs> <laughs> damn it me and my big mouth um, <laughs> but no, that, that's the biggest thing, to be a part of something where it's like, here is your history, this is what you're a part of, this is where you're going, this, it's, that was the thing for me that I was like, and, and I get to play a princess. I know, there's that. But then to your point, there's such a story to chew on with her, losing her father. Yeah. We've had moments, Juan Somdi, we'll get to you in a second. <laughs> no, <here>. no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. Yes, 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 yes. But right, but like there's, there's been <laughs> sessions with you, and even when you're lunch, yes. you can hear the tears because you, you know, there's so much about loss. Already, just by getting to you, we've got themes of loss, mm -hmm. heartbreak, and then renewal and rebirth and pushing through. So Talanji is an example. Talanji and Anduin need to have like a coffee someday because yeah. I think yeah. there's a lot to yeah, talk yeah. about. Yeah. Right? Just loss and, push, and pushing through, and it's, we've had some dark moments with her. Yeah, so. definitely. I mean, that was a... But, that was like a weirdly, because the thing is, when we do, when, you know, we're in the UK and we do sessions, normally because of the time difference, we do it in the UK sort of at the end of the day, whereas you guys are sort of like, oh, good morning, where they're like, I've been out for hours. <laughs> so there's a lot of possibility for things to, you know, during your day, like everyone, things go wrong or you get some bad news or whatever. And so you really do, I feel like every session I really do bring, I'm sort of my most authentic self because I'm not sort of trying to be okay. It's 5, 6 p.m. Stuff has happened. Um, so <laughs> I'm like, hi. <laughs> Got to warm up. Mm -hmm. And um, 
and with that scene, I, I can't really remember what happened with it, but I, I've, I've lost my dad. So it was all really accessible. And I think be feeling part of a safe space where you can explore that, because sometimes you're, you're part of projects and you don't feel like you want to ac access that because you don't feel like you're around people who, who care. But I remember being walked through that. And there's something about your voice where you can't hide so I was like, I'm just going to have to go there. You can tell if you're somebody's fake crying. You can hear it. And, and so actually, even though I knew it was quite big and I knew that it was very close to my life, it was really easy to access. But I think that's down to you guys and making it such a safe space to explore that. Because if I definitely didn't feel uh, like I could and that this was, you know, more than just a game, it was a family, it was a world, it was a home, I, I don't think as an actor I would have let myself go there because there's loads of times where you get emotionally manipulated as an actor. Um, so that's the main thing, is how easy those scenes are because of what I love you what you said, bringing your raw, authentic self. I mean, I think, I mean, it's such a theme, and I don't mean to beat this up, but just being you. If you as an actress have a crappy day and you come to the studio, then that's there, and that's present, mm -hmm. and you use it. So yeah. that's when, you know, I, I say a lot in the classes I teach that we chase the chills. It sounds so silly, because to your point, when you hear a line or a tear or crying or something that's real, you're, all your hair lights up on your body and you know it. So as actors, when you're just in the moment bringing yourself and letting yourself be whatever that looks like, whatever it feels like, and are in that safe space, that's when we get the chills. And that's when our stories from all of you connect to our community at large and we're all on this kind of crazy journey together, right? Yeah. Well, we love you, Princess Talanji. Yes. I want to move over here. And then there's Rokan. Yeah. Abubakar. Oh, my God. Ah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Just seeing that big smiling face, Steve. We're all here together. This is so awesome. Oh, oh so cool. <laughs> I know. Oh, God. So, Abu, what do you, I was hanging out with, having drink, drinks with Abu last night. We're sitting there. I'm like, Abu, I told you. And what's your take so far? It's banana boats. Crazy, right? It's just. It's insane. <laughs> I mean, you guys rock. Like, you're yeah. all amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely. Like, yeah. This is. It's great. It's our tribe, we're home, as Indira said, we're all home. I think all of us on their stage, all of us here together, we're the same tribe, man. And it's kind of fun to be here and just celebrate that, you yeah. know? Yeah, I, I, and I really respect that. Yes. And I really feel that. I mean, the love this place has, jeez! <laughs> like, it's, it's real, and I really, I really love that. So what's it been like so playing in our game? Real Khan is amazing. Yeah, I love it. Along with Talanji and Kicks Holy Ass. I'm, yeah, it's what's great. What's it been like for you? It, no, it's been so much fun. I mean, like, I, again, like, I'm a, I'm a World of Warcraft player as well. Yeah, like, I'm yes, a fan. Right. So, you know. Hard, like, harder Alliance. So this is, so I, I started, right, and give me, give me time. I started as a human paladin. Um, <clears throat> but, but... I am now with the Horde. <laughs> because that's where I belong. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's the right answer. Or the wrong, depending. Steve, what do you play as? Oh, I... I Can't I, answer? Well, I... Both sides? <laughs> for the Horde. Come on. <laughs> I have both. I have both. I have both. Okay. So what does Rokan mean to you? What would you say? I said this is biased. Not okay. <laughs> For the light! <laughs> yes. I can't believe we're all here. This is our Friday right now. It's great. Uh, so, Dark Spirit Troll, that accent, that sound, where does yeah. that come from? How did you create him? It's, it's all from the gut. Like, it's from the gut. It comes from there, from the earth. Like, I, I mean, like, it's, it was, it's so much fun. I mean, the character's so much fun to play with. I mean, yeah, he's this, you know, this badass troll. It's Dark Spear, badass troll who's rolling heads left, right, and center. Like, it's amazing, and it's so much fun. But, again, it is, it's, so, it's so primal, it's so, like, visceral, that, I mean, yeah, I, I, I had so much fun with this guy. I mean, this guy, he's, he's a beautiful guy. And even though, like, you know, a lot of this, I, yo, he is beautiful. <laughs> um, and even though his race has really suffered, I mean, you know, they've just lost their leader, they've gone, you know, they've gone through so much pain. It's, it, you know, there's still that kind of, that love for, you know, that love for what they do, that tribalism that they got there, which I just respect. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. There was a lot to mine from Rokan. And, and to see that relationship between Rokan and Talanji was really awesome, because it's like bridging these troll cultures and finding that common yeah. ground and kind of uniting and being stronger together than you yeah. ever were apart. That's yeah. awesome. 
But I love calling him beautiful because he is. I mean, again, I'm beating it up here, but this idea that he's gone through a lot too. And he's still there, still wants to be with Talanji, still wants to bridge the gap and form a union. Absolutely. And there's power. And despite the grief and what he's been through, there is a beauty behind him. Yeah. He writes haikus when he's home by himself. Maybe he knits. We don't know, Steve. <laughs> We don't know. Yeah, I've, yeah, we've written some Rokan haiku. Maybe, maybe <laughs> someday we'll put we'll them out there. We'll tweet those out. We'll tweet <laughs> them out. <laughs> But there's a sound in that earthiness. You're right. I didn't think about it, but he's really a grounded guy. Yeah. I don't think he would stand if you had to do a real con. You're a real con stance. I want to see a real con stance. Sorry, Laura. I'm gonna just you know take this. No, for a show me the real power stance. Real con stance like this. Kind of walking around like this. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. <laughs> Great, but there is such an earthiness and power to him. Yeah, and I think that's again, it comes. It, it's it, there's a groundedness to it. I mean, there's a groundedness to all these characters. Right. I mean, the world is 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 full of it. It's beautiful. It's it's full. It's it's real. You know, in the sense that they deal with real issues. Each and every one of these characters deal with real issues, and I really, it, it, it's it's rare to to get a story where literally anyone can connect to any one of these characters, and I think that's what's so beautiful about it. Because you don't feel alone. You've got someone in there who you can connect to. And I, yeah, I love it. I love it so much. So what part of him do you connect with? I mean, just picking up from loss and being strong. I mean, what, what part of Abu do you think is in Rokan? Besides the great voice in the walk. Badass. <laughs> badass. <laughs> and badass. <laughs> Duh, of course. No, no. <laughs> no, I think, again, it's this, it's this whole thing of, of just... Teamwork. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's Working great. with the team. I love it. That kind of exploring as well. And I, I, the guy's a rogue. I mean, I mean, I'm not a rogue yet, <laughs> but uh, I will. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I mean, it's, you can find qualities again. I don't know, man. I mean, I feel like it, badass is this one that sticks <laughs> to mind. So. I love it. Well, you make a good point. I always get asked, is it hard bringing creatures to life? You know, trolls, orcs, the whole thing. And I say no, because we're still ultimately chasing a base human emotion. No yeah. matter what physicality they're in, yeah. there's always a base human emotion. Yeah, and it's really, it's really easy as well like, to, to, go, to think of it as, oh, yeah, these guys are creatures. You know, right. again, there's this whole thing of like, oh, but the horde are bad. They're not bad. Like, like you know, you've got these different characters. They've all got human-type qualities, that's right. right? And I think that's what is what each and every one here has brought out, right. you know, and I think that's why this, this world is so beautiful. Even, the, you know, with the writing and everything, it's just, these, you can all relate to them. That's right. Unless you're Bwan Samdi, king of the death. <laughs> beautifully said, Abu, beautifully said. Then there's you. Everybody loves it. <laughs> I've been waiting to share Buon Samdi with you. Alex, tell us where this voice, this character, where are you pulling him from? Well... <laughs> the year was 1970. No. <laughs> okay, initially, um, first off, this is so damn cool. Well, it's your first con as well, right? This is my first. I'm, yep. I'm a new initiate, y'all. <laughs> and it's good to be home, for real. So, Buon Samp, I remember initially getting the call, all right, what are you looking for? And it was a uh, Jamaican, African, what? Right. This makes no sense at all. Steve. Steve. <laughs> well, but uh, where the, um, so, all right, here's a fun fact. The origin of the idea for me for Buon Samdi was from a movie I love called The Harder They Come, which is an old Jamaican movie. And there's a man that talk like this the whole time. And then what had happened was, as I went in there, I just started having more fun with it and became more mischievous. Yes. And thank, you know, I'm so grateful for you because everything we did, we just said, have more fun. Yeah. And we just kept having fun until right. he blossomed yeah. into this guy. That's what's great, just giving the actors space to do what they want to do. And you owned Bon Sa I mean, Steve, <laughs> right. I mean, like, really. That, that's, that's a perfect example of, you know, we come in, we think, man, we got this cool idea for a character. We really get to pay off this old, this lore and stuff like that. And then to have someone just take it to the stratosphere, we're rolling in the <laughs> session. We're just dying laughing at the stuff he's just going with. Is amazing, amazing. That's great. So can we see, because you, when Alex uh, records Bon Samedi, you have a whole kind of stance you do. So do I, I want you to bring your Bon Samedi here on stage right now. What do you guys think? <laughs> you do a whole, like... I didn't even know. This one. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got a couple, so... 
Depends on how mischievous. We got the lean back. <laughs> we <laughs> say so you want a little bit more. So there's always a floating. And actually, the key is to make sure you have purple reading glasses on. That's perfect. That is the key. So, so what part of you do you bring to Bon? Like, when you think about Bon Samedi, what does he mean to you? How to approach him? Because he's not a bad guy. He's mischievous. Yeah. He's there to make a deal. Um, you know, it's funny, too, because I remember reading the, uh, the first cinematic where I'm like, oh, wait, so you get something, but what does Bon Samedi get? Right. Honestly, he wants love. I, that's right. I think so. He really does. Um, but, you know, I, definitely the mischievousness. I also have a... Because my parents are from Haiti. And so when I think about Bon Samedi, I think about old Haitian lore as well, which is Bon Samedi. Um, so there's that rootedness there as well. And um, I... Well, I don't know if it's a connection to me. What I love about playing Bon Samedi, it's his slow, manipulative style. Right, right, right. Now, I'm not saying that's how I am. <laughs> but I might need a favor from you later. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I love it. Don't take the deal. Don't take the deal. <laughs> I know. It's bad. It's bad. Oh, how much do we love Bon Samedi? Let's give it up for Bon Samedi. Oh, my gosh. All right. I saved the best for the last, am I right? I saved the best for the last. <laughs> Scroll Sage Nola, Marianne, what is your, what are you thinking right now? Wow. <laughs> and thank you so much. Yes. I really appreciate your, you know, your going along with the character and stuff and sending all that love. I really appreciate it. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So, Marianne, do you remember when I first told you the Twitter world was blowing up about you? Did you believe me then? Or you kind of you didn't really, you weren't really sure, and now here we are. Uh, no, she told me that, and I said, you're kidding, right? <laughs> so, really, I didn't expect it. Yeah. Truly appreciate it. Yeah. So what part of you is Scroll Sage Nola? I think the part I know of you is you're such a loving, beautiful woman. And I think what we love about those lines is it feels like she's talking to us with full of love, right? So how do you feel about Scroll Sage Nola? Well, I think she says a lot of what I think. Right. And I agree, you know, and I especially love helping people. So, yeah, yeah. people, turtles. <laughs> we love her. I'm in for it. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. We love you so much. So I'm so glad to have you here to celebrate you. Thanks. So I've got the wrap. We've got to start closing up really quick. I think on your cards you have lines of your character. Can you just go through and read the top two lines so we can hear your voices? Here we go. A just cause is always worth fighting for. Sylvanas Windrunner, you have led the Horde to a place without honor. Lord Aron is ours. It's over. Look at you, the boy playing soldier. Muzzle your dog, your majesty. Your father would be so proud. Is that his? Why, you've gotten it all bloody. You call for peace when it suits you, little lion. But you're quick enough to kill. Beautiful! Were we supposed to do all of them? Oh, just two of them. We gotta, we, yeah, we, yes. Top two lines. Here we go. Okay, okay. I am Jaina Proudmore. <laughs> I've come for an audience with Lord Admiral Catherine Proudmore. My mother. You are no daughter of mine. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you. <laughs> I accept your judgment, mother. My daughter... Forgive me. Forgive your father. And forgive yourself. Beautiful. All right. Right, I've got a lot here. So, um, <clears throat> oh, mighty Rezan, as always, you come when I ask for your aid. I have sought the aid of the Horde, but my father may not agree with my actions. 
advise me. Zandala forever! Oh. Rock on. Don't be getting mixed up in the voodoo. <laughs> Nothing gonna stop the whore. <laughs> Great. All right, Buan Samdi. Yes, yes. So you get your kingdom back all very nice. But soon you tired of old Buan Samdi. The one who bring the mean, make the crop go. No. I need more than just your word. So good, so good. Hold on. We got a D. <laughs> All right. Let's do these two, Marianne, right here, the last two. The cycle of life can be cruel. A turtle made it to the water. Oh my gosh. All right, all right. You, I love it. Okay, so guys, I, this is usually the part where we have the Q&A, but I got something crazy up my sleeve. We can't do Q&A, but if you trust me and let me do this, let's start uh, clearing things out here, everybody. We've got something in store for you. Can you trust me? Can I do this? You give me some space to do this? You won't regret it, okay? So we're just gonna move some things around here, and then we're just gonna do one last little thing. So uh, give us a couple seconds. actually happened so I had this idea I pitched it we talked to the teams we talked to events and I thought they're not gonna actually let me do it but they're letting me do it so let me see if we are are we ready all right so guys I'm dedicating this piece to all of you you know we wouldn't have a voice actor stage or a voice actor panel if it wasn't for you our community our tribe our friends and our family so I'm feeling all weepy right now because I want to tell you I love you and I dedicate this piece to all of you from all of us Enjoy.
gentlemen, the war, we're going to bring your peace live. Oh my gosh. Our wonderful Laura Bailey, our composer Logan LaFlut, the Blizzards Audio Choir, Felipe, Jeff, Tony and Cody. Let's give it up for this amazing live performance. All of our voice actors come back on stage. Was it worth it? Did you like my surprise? Did you like it? We had to do it. We had to do it. So everybody back on stage, let's give a huge round of applause to all of our amazing voice actors. Let's come back up on stage. Abu, Marianne, we good? All right. I present you with the Voices of War, Horde versus Alliance. Thank you for joining us today. Let's take it back. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being here. We're going to be signing autographs in a bit, so uh, we'll see you next year. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.